<coughs> Hello and welcome everybody. We are here as the team, new team for Strategic Business for Therapists. I'm Rachel Earing and this is Tanya A. Prince. And we're going to be talking to you today about finding your niche and why this is important for new therapists, coaches and practitioners and why you may not have a clue where to start. What is a niche? Why should it matter to you when you can basically use your techniques for everybody? Um, and is it important for you? So Tanya is going to answer some of these questions for us, um, especially when you are literally you've just maybe passed your exams, you've maybe just qualified as a coach and a therapist, and this is all so new to you, where do you begin? So where do people begin, Tanya, with this? I think when you're thinking about a niche, what you're looking at, it helps you be able to target your marketing because uh, without knowing an area you want to work on, you might do a lot of things. And I just have this thought of people working like Trojans, <laughs> working really it hard. Like I did when I first started because I just couldn't. And, and this, is, this is the thing. I came from a background of television, so I understood market a little bit of marketing and niches but I couldn't get my head around why as a therapist I needed to do that yeah I think a lot of therapists are very scared of actually getting a niche because they think they'll lose business mm. as well aren't they really so they think oh my I'm going to make this a smaller group of people I'm pitching to I'm going to lose all these people and, and there can be a little bit of a fear driven element there for them but uh, what I would say is if you know your niche uh, you know, you, you can study that area yeah. and you can become an expert in that area. And people love to go to experts, you know, and you can actually research on the Internet and find out where people who have who are in that niche with very specific problems. You can go and find where where they are far easier to find these people and become part of the conversation and become a very respected part of the conversation. So I think there's a lot of reasons why it's important to find a niche for yourself. I mean, one of, and I also say this as well, you just don't grab any old niche, you know, thinking, oh, I'll have that one. There's a lot of people who got them problems. <laughs> but it is, it becomes a bit of a FOMO issue, doesn't it? Because we get ourselves so confused and so caught up in social media and all these groups that are out there at the moment and all these beautiful titles that people have got for the groups and the challenges mm. that they're doing how do people find their passion i mean there, there's various ways you can find your passion a lot of people you know that we're often often passionate about the own issues we've had in life yeah you know if i think about myself i was very fearful fe i had a fear of public speaking mm. Uh, you might think we weird, weird that one because mm -hmm. I went to no business for ten years. Because <laughs> you can't shut her up now. <laughs> no, no, no. Can't shut uh, you know what you find is a I say public speaking fear of public speaking. A lot of people have got that. It, it's it, it's not about who you are because you can be an extremely confident person and yet be triggered in that environment. So, you know, it's not about you you just this shy kind of person. No, you can be extremely confident competent etc but you're triggered so i think i was more like that i, I kind of knew and uh, was very good academically but i couldn't even put my hand up in a classroom of people and give an answer because i think it, part of that was a fear of making a mistake for myself you know so once you have a problem like that you you know and there was part of me inside very confident so there, that drive that passion to overcome it and that's why i went into show business Mm. You know, and I thought that was very interesting for me because, um, you know, I went into show business and I could be quite extreme. I was in a rock band. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the rock chick. Tanya, yeah, the yeah. rock chick. <laughs> You've seen rock bands and they can be pretty out there, can't you? Yeah. So I, I could do that. I used I to love that. rock. Well, I still I do. do. I, I do like certain kinds of rock, you know, and st stuff like that. But I couldn't just be in a conversation and be myself because mm. it's often about just being your true authentic self is the issue. Uh, you know, so something related to that. So it could be this character. And it wasn't even that stretch because there is that element of wildness in me. So. <laughs> 
it, it is something as well that we grow into, isn't it? And, and very much like we grow into ourselves, we grow into our therapy business, we grow into our niche. So I know that I found as I was, I was growing as a therapist, I know that when we first started to work together, that being visible for me was just no, just no, absolutely not going to happen. And yet well, you, you may, I don't know if you remen remember, and yet that. here we are. Yeah, I, I know you've come a, on a huge, beautiful journey yourself because uh, one of the mentoring days, you mentioned that personally. And I think you did some work on that. Next, I know you're sending me a video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was one of those. And I, I, I do, I remember it really well because we'd yeah. have that mentoring day or, or training, mm. whatever it was. And I thought, I, I've got a choice here. I can, I can hide forever behind this or I can really just open myself up and record it and then send you that and actually once I'd recorded it I realized that was the best thing for me to do because I was doing a case study on myself I think at the time mm -hmm. and I realized that once I'd recorded it that was the best thing I could do because I wouldn't have remembered actually I got myself so upset <laughs> as I, was clearing. I had such a good clear out because I actually felt like I was working on a client and that just happened to be me. So it was yeah. a really good way of practicing mm. for one. But then when I came to write it all up, I actually had something to reference to because as you know, when you're clear, you clear, you, you forget things, you know, it doesn't become an issue, does not it? Does it? Yeah. So it was a really good reference tool. Um, and straight after that, I was then, I thought, right, I might as well send you this and then you can have a laugh and see how far um, I didn't have a come. I mean, it took but me a long time after that for anything to, 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 to reach the mainstream, but it, yeah. was a, it was a huge start. Well, I remember you sent me down. I just felt very proud of you. I just, I, I felt a wonderful feeling inside seeing what you'd achieved there actually. But if I pull it right back, you know, I like to say that. <laughs> if I pull it right back, you see, passion we're often passionate about the issues we have we like to solve them so you see a lot of people say with me it was confidence i love people seeing people achieve be confident and be successful and i think it's related to the issues that i had in a way because that's been a bit of a journey in my life and therefore once you have a challenge in your life like that you study it you learn about it you, you've got a lot of knowledge about that. And you've also got the emotion about sorting it. And, and people are often passionate about those things. So, and, and because of that, often the challenges we have in our lives can help us discover our niches, the ones we're truly passionate about solving. So you want to be linking your niche to your passion yeah. because and your you problems. don't want to try... link your niche to your yeah. problems and then it become passionate about it and, and then there you go you sorted <laughs> but also you know you improve yourself as you go forward as well isn't it because it's a continual learning so yes. you know you're passionate about the area uh you know you obviously want to overcome that and whether you're fully a done and dusted deal you're well on your way anyway because you you're oh. focused on and you you put a lot of time in it so you know, uh, I think people don't always realize the immense amount of body of knowledge they gain from working on their own challenges and, you know, overcoming their own challenges. And then once you, you know, because a lot of my students have pointed out, oh, my God, you've got loads of knowledge in this area. And, you know, uh, you know, is that an area you maybe would love to help people overcome? And a lot of them do actually say, yes, yeah, I'm quite passionate about that one. See, so it's about linking your niche to your passion, but there, there's obviously simple ways of doing it. And, you know, I did, and I did send this over to you, isn't it? I, I created a little ebook for our lovely little project. Absolutely. It's fabulous. <laughs> and, and I do like very simple ways of doing things, you know, making it very simple. So I do believe uh, I'm an NLP trainer as well. So part of what I love to do is modeling, as in go and find other people who are successful and uh, yeah. have a look what they're doing and see which resonates with you and then develop you know look at what they're doing so you're kind of modeling that but you're, you're kind of creating your own uniqueness to it you know so I, I i kind of put in that little book some simple ways to open up people's creativity oh. uh, so they can see all the areas that others are focusing on 
and see which of those areas really resonate with them. Because uh, as you open up and start to look, oh, well, that person's working with domestic abuse. Oh, dear. Well, I'm quite passionate about, you know, you, that's what happens, isn't it? Uh, so uh. it's about triggering that creativity, opening up the mind. And and then I, I think that's just important. So the little ebook, that little ebook, which actually it is a little ebook because I like to keep it simple. However, what I would say in that, that took a lot of time <laughs> refining it down, down, down. It does though, doesn't it? When you then start to, which is why I sort of leave the ebooks to Tanya really, <laughs> because it, it it's, it's the practice of that, isn't it? And that again is something that we're going to be helping and showing you along the way, because I, I still need that guidance with that. Well, to be honest, I need the consistency with that. And I think the whole premise of what we're putting together is, <clears throat> we're going to be giving you that consistent approach towards your business and towards you. And we're going to start off probably with niche, niches and, and anything else that you want to work on. But if this, the whole strategic business for therapists is really about giving you a consistent approach for however long that you want to stay with us at a minimal, minimal price and as much value as we can get. Because our mission, Tanya, is basically isn't it to make energy therapy the go-to place for mental health and health issues globally so that's our mission and that's what we are endeavoring to do and that's why we want to give as much value to therapists coaches and practitioners <clears throat> on this journey yeah. so we hope you join us <clears throat> and the details will be below uh, just click below and you can find out a little bit more yeah I'll add one more thing with our mission is to help them have fun while they do it as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fun. It's all about fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about fun. So do come and join us. We'd love to meet you. And if you've got any questions, just ask away. Take care for now. Bye.